Now that we have the login route in place, the goal for this video is to write two test cases for it. We're going to write one that makes sure when a valid email password combo is sent, we get an XAuth token back. And we're going to write a second test case that makes sure if the login credentials don't match a user in the database, we return a 400. Now, before I do any of that, I am going to remove this comment right here. This is left over from the challenge in the previous video. Now I can save the server file and we can move into the server test file, head to the bottom and add a new describe block for this route. Describe. This block of tests will be for post forward slash users forward slash login. Then we can set up our arrow function where we'll have our two test cases. The first test case we're going to do together. It should log in user and return auth token. This is when we have a valid email and password as the request body. We can set up our function with our done argument. And now we can go ahead and define the second test case. And this is the one that you're going to be doing as a challenge. It should reject invalid login. This test case is going to make sure that if something goes wrong, like the password doesn't match the user's password, the login is indeed rejected. We're going to knock out the first test case together and the second one that will be your challenge for the video. Now, in order to make either of these requests, we are going to need access to the seed data. For this first test case, I'm going to go ahead and use the second user's email and password. And then we can go ahead and query this user inside of the database after the call comes back and make sure the token was added. To get started with that, I am going to call request, passing in the application, and we will be making a post request to forward slash users forward slash login. Now we can set up the body data we want to send, which in our case is the email and the password. We have access to the email property via the users array. We're going to grab that second user using the index of one and we'll grab his email. And we can do the exact same thing for the password. I'm going to set password equal to we're going to go into that users array, grab the first item and grab the password property. Now with this in place, the request has been successfully sent. We have a valid email and password. We have the right HTTP method and URL, which means now it's time to make some assertions. First up, the easy ones. Let's expect a 200 to come back as the status, which it will be if everything goes as planned. And we can make an assertion that verifies an XAuth token was sent back as a header. I'm going to expect using a custom expect function. Inside of here, we will expect that the response headers object has an XAuth token. We'll use bracket notation once again, since we have a hyphen in our property name, and we're going to expect this value to exist. Now, the next thing we can do is call end, and this is where we're going to set up our custom asynchronous function, which is going to go ahead and query the database. I'm going to call end, passing in the custom function, which gets called with a potential error and the response. And like all of the cases where we used a custom function in end, the first thing we're going to do is check for errors. If there are errors, there is no reason to continue. We can simply return by calling done and passing in the error so it gets properly printed to the screen. Now, if there are no errors with the assertions up above, we are going to need to find the user that we potentially created a token for using user. And we can query using find by ID since we already know the ID of the user. It's sitting right here. Next up, I can go ahead and pass in that ID. I'm going to go ahead and access the first item in the user's array, grab that ID property just like this, and we can tack on a then callback to do something when the user query finishes. Now, if it finishes, what we want to do is assert that the XAuth token that came back was indeed added into the tokens array. Let's expect that the user has a tokens array and that the first item includes using to include the following attributes. Now we have used to include before. It doesn't mean it equals. It means that the tokens object, that first item has at least these properties. We need an access property equal to auth and we need a token property equal to the token we got sent back. That's in the response headers object and we can use bracket notation to get the value for X off. Now this is our assertion inside of the query and we are all done, which means we can call done. Like our other asynchronous tests, we also want to tack on a catch callback to catch the error that might occur right here if they're not equal. I'm going to add a catch call 
we're going to get the error and we're simply going to pass it into done just like this. Now, this is something that we've done for most of our queries when we pass a custom function in to end. But if you notice up above for sign up, we did not do that right here. All I'm going to do is copy the line from below the highlighted code right here, move up to the test case where we forgot to add it. It should create a user and paste it right here. Now, would the test case still fail if one of these assertions failed? You betcha. It's going to look for a catch case. It's never going to find one, which means done doesn't get called and the test will time out. But you're not going to get a useful error message. By adding this, you're going to get the exact error message depending on which assertion failed and why it failed. Now that we have this in place, our test case is complete. With our custom query in place, we can go ahead and save our test file and run the test suite from the terminal. I'm going to use NPM test to start up the test suite. We're first going to move through our to do related tests. Eventually we'll get to our get users me test, which is coming up next and our sign up test. All of those test cases are passing. Here is our login test. It did indeed pass, which is fantastic. Now the second test case failed because I haven't filled it out. That's perfectly fine. As long as your should login user and return auth token test is passing, you are ready to move on. Now, if one of these values did not match to include would throw a proper error. And to prove that I can simply change auth to auth T. This proves that it is essential to make sure to add this catch call. If you don't call it, you're not going to get a clear error message, which is just going to make your life a lot harder. You're going to have to dig around and figure out exactly why things are not working as expected. This time around, we do get an error and it's really clear. We expected some object to include these values. These values obviously weren't in that object and we can go right to the source to figure out why. Now that we're done with the first test case, let's go ahead and move on to the second one. And this is going to be your challenge. This test case is going to be really similar to the one we just created. The only thing you're going to change is instead of passing in a valid password, you're going to pass in an invalid password, and then you're going to tweak all of your assertions. The 200 should be a 400. You should expect the X auth token to not exist. And down below, you should expect that the user tokens array has a length equal to zero because no token should have been created. And it didn't have any to start with, so the length should still be zero. Take a moment to knock this out. You can actually copy the contents of the test case up above, paste it into the test case down below, tweak it, then rerun the test suite, make sure everything passes, and if it does, you're good to go. Pause the video, knock this out, test it, and when you're done, click play. All right, I'm gonna get started by copying the code from up above and pasting it down below. Then we can tweak it to fit what this test is supposed to test. I'm gonna change the password to anything other than what it is by concatenating some value. The number one will do the trick. And then we can go ahead and tweak the assertions. The 200 should turn into a 400. We should not get an X auth token. So I'm gonna use to not exist and down below, Instead of expecting the first item to include certain properties, we're going to expect that the array itself has a length equal to zero, which means we can remove the entire to include call and replace it with one to be zero, just like this. And that's all it takes. Tweaking this test case really isn't too bad. And if we now rerun the test suite, we should see all of the test cases passing. This will be the final time we rerun it for this video. So you'll only have to watch these test cases go through just this once. Here we go. We are nearing the end. We're at the sign up call. Now we're at the login call. All of our test cases are passing, which is fantastic. All of the tweaks to our test case do appear to be working, which means we are done. We can make a commit and wrap this one up. I'm going to run git status and we should have those two changed files. We made a small tweak to server and we added a few tests to the server test file git commit with the am flag. We'll add those to the next commit. Add tests for post users login. I'm going to make the commit, push it up to GitHub, and that is it for this one. I will see you in the next video where you are going to explore how to log out users. This means we'll be deleting auth tokens as opposed to creating them. It's coming up next, so stay tuned. I will see you then.